Hey everyone, this is Laurie Meyer, and I just wanted to pop in and share a card with you. This is a very fun accordion fold card, and it is featuring the designer series paper from the Countryside Inn collection, and also some of the stamps that are included in the new Circle Sayings stamp set, along with the punch that comes with that. It's a circle punch. And it's just a really fun little card. It definitely is a surprise when somebody opens it up and sees that it not only has the front, but also this inside piece and several different sentiments that are shared. I have seen quite a few different kinds of cards that have this accordion fold, and I'm sure you've seen many of them as well. I took some of the features that I liked from different cards that I saw and combined them into this one and wanted to show you how I made this. And the easiest way to do that is to really just jump in and make one. So the first thing that you're going to need is for the back of the card. And for this you're going to need a quarter sheet of cardstock. I decided to use Knight of Navy as the back. And let me show you where that goes on the finished card. It literally is the back of the card. It's just going to give it a little bit more weight and stability. And this is a quarter sheet, which means that when it's cut, it's going to be four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches long. So if you take a standard piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, and you literally cut it in half on one side and then take two, the, each of the two remaining pieces and cut them in half, you will end up with four pieces that are the same size. And again, it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So you can get four card bases out of one sheet of cardstock. The star of the show, though, is the designer series paper. And this is where we're going to end up we're going to fold a piece of designer series paper. But let me show you how you create this piece, how you cut it and how you score it for your card. The designer series paper that I used is from the really beautiful new collection that is in the annual catalog. This, as I've mentioned, is called Countryside Inn. You're going to see that I have a lot of pieces. I have had so much fun making cards with this paper. And I continue to put even the smallest pieces back in here because I know that I will find a way to use them. This paper measures 12 inches by 12 inches. And the piece that you are going to want to cut is going to be 12 inches wide. So you're going to use the full width of the paper and then you're going to cut this to be five and a quarter inches high. So five and a quarter by 12. And make sure that if you have a pattern like I do here with the, I don't know if these are flowers or thistles, but they definitely have a direction. The leaves do as well. So I want my pattern to go vertically, which means I need to pay attention to how I cut that piece of paper. So again, when you cut that, it will end up being five and a quarter inches high and 12 inches wide. So you can get two of these out of one sheet of six by six, and then you're going to have a piece that will be left over. You'll have an additional piece, and we're gonna use that in just a minute as well. To prepare your piece of paper for the card, pull out your scoring board, and you're going to make three score lines. And you're going to put the paper in so that the 12 inch side is at the top of your scoring board. And the Stampin' Up! Simply Score tool is really nice because it comes with three pointers. So if you wanted to place those, you'll know exactly where you need to score this. You're going to put it at 2 inches, 5 inch, and 8 inches. And what you're simply going to do is take the tool that comes with the scoring board and score a line at two, 
score a line at 5, and score a line at 8. So those are the three score lines that you're going to make on that designer series paper. And then we can go ahead and get the scoring board off to the side. Now let's take a look at the finished card and again just kind of see where we're going so we know what we're going to be doing with that designer series paper. We want to end up with a piece that opens in the front and then kind of a page if you want to think about it that way that has the same designer series paper pattern on the back and on the front and then we have a final page in the back. So the way that we're going to do that is if you grab that piece of designer series paper that you just scored and you fold it, so if I hold it, hold the piece down, I'm right handed. So if you're left handed, you may want to um, turn this over 180 degrees. And what I'm going to do is at that 8 inch mark, I'm going to fold the paper toward me. At the 5 inch mark, I'm going to fold the paper away from me as you can see, and then at that 2 inch mark I'm going to fold the paper toward me. So if I were to hold the paper up, it's going to look like an M with the smaller piece, smaller edge over here, and the larger edge on the right. So you're going to get an M. What we need to do with this piece is we need to glue this middle part together. That's really going to be kind of the page that we have on the final card. And the easiest way to do that is to kind of hold the, the piece down, lift that front tab, and just fold everything over. You're going to see the background, the design on the back of the designer series paper. And I'm going between the two inch and the 8 inches where I scored, and I'm just going to glue these together. And I don't need a lot of glue. I like to use the liquid glue so I have a little bit of leeway in case I need to move my paper around before I commit it to being in one place. I'm just going to kind of hold the edge on the left down, and I'm simply going to fold that page over itself and give it a nice little burnish. And by doing that, I've created that page on the inside. So now when I open up this piece of designer series paper, rather than it being the 12 inches wide, it's really um, 4 inches wide. That's the complete width. And now I have some pages. I have this front flap, I have this middle page, and then I have the back. We are going to take this piece and we are going to adhere it to the back piece. This is the one that we talked about first. That's the four and a quarter by five and a half. And I am going to adhere that so that I will have a really nice border all the way around. I'll be able to see that knight of navy color all the way around the edge. And to do that, I'm simply going to turn this entire designer series paper piece to the back and go ahead and add some glue. And again, I don't need a lot. One thing about the um, Tombow is if you truly hold the glue applicator down to your paper and just give it a little squeeze as you move the applicator where you want the glue to be, then you will end up having a kind of a small line and that's exactly what you want when you're using this kind of glue. Now I'm going to hold on the left and on the right and I'm holding it right at the edge and I am standing up here so I can get a pretty good idea of getting that piece centered and I'm going to do the best I can. So I've got that centered on my paper and I'm going to just turn that over and give it a nice little burnish. I've already stamped my personal stamp on the, the back. And now I have the base of the card. I've got my front flap, that middle page, and the back. And what I need to do now is really pull the decorated sentiments together and then put the entire card together. 
So let's talk about these sentiments and some of the easier ways to make those. I have used a couple of stamps from the Circle Sayings stamp set to make my sentiments. You can see I used the Happy Birthday. I used the flower, which is right here. It's really kind of a semicircle for the flower. And then for the second, I used the Celebrate, which is a circle with Celebrate three times, as you can see, and a cupcake. And then at the very end, I use because you're awesome. And I just thought it was such a nice kind of little storyboard. You know, happy birthday, celebrate because you're awesome. And it just works together beautifully in this card. When you make the sentiments, you're going to also, at least I did, use the punch that comes with the bundle. You can get these two products as a bundle. They work together beautifully. The circle is two and three eighths inch in diameter, which is absolutely perfect for uh, punching out the images that you're going to create. Now the two that I created for this card are these two, and I'm not going to stamp, but I am going to give you a couple of tips, and I'm pretty sure you know how to stamp. So let's talk about the first one. This is the one that's going to go on the outside. And when you look at the stamp that was used to create that particular image, what I did is I mounted that on an acrylic block. And if you look at the stamp, on the left side, there are a couple of leaves. And on the right side, there is a flower. And when you stamp the half circle, and you have that image, and then you turn your stamp so that you have the other half circle, and you're pulling it all together. You line up the leaves to go around your flower, and it will make the circle complete. So I can see exactly where I had the half stamps, because I have these two leaves here, and I have these two leaves here. So if you just line those up, you will get a perfect circle. The other circle stamp that I used is this Celebrate one that is already in a circle. It is a full circle stamp, and you can see it right here. When you have stamps like this that have a very distinct shape, the best way to get these on your acrylic block so they are in the shape that you want them to be in is literally to drop them on your table and then come in and pick them up with your acrylic block. The stamp is going to automatically go back to the shape that it was created in. I would not take this stamp off the stamp sheet and mount it like this because I might squeeze it a little bit and get it out of shape. The best way is to just allow it to reform the shape that it was created in, and when you mount it to your acrylic block, it will be in the right shape. So I just wanted to mention those few tricks, and that particular stamp is going to give you this full image. It will give you celebrate all the way around, and then the cupcake stamp that comes with the set is the perfect size to go right in the middle of that three celebrate stamp. And once you get those stamped, you can punch them out. And I punched both of those with the punch that came with the bundle. So you can see the size that I ended up with is literally just perfect. It is perfectly going around the flowers and definitely leaves you some room around the celebrate words. The colors that I chose for my stamping, I wanted to be very coordinating with the designer series paper. The Countryside Inn has a lot of blues and one of them is the new boho blue. This is a new end color. It is gorgeous. 
So you can see on the happy birthday, the one on the outside, I did the flowers in the boho blue. For the second sentiment, I did the cupcake in the boho blue. Boho blue. And then Night of Navy is also a color in the designer series paper. I did the happy birthday in the Night of Navy, and then I did the celebrate words in the Night of Navy. And I thought it was kind of fun to have Night of Navy on the inside, on this sentiment, on the outside, on that sentiment, and the opposite for the um, boho blue. So those are the two sentiments that I created to go on the first couple of pieces of this card. And then for the final piece, this back piece, I kept with the basic white because I did want to have a place where I could write a greeting. And I also wanted to make sure that when this card is closed, that none of the white on this piece is showing. And in order to do that, when you cut that piece of white, make sure that it is two and three quarters wide and five inches high. And that is going to tuck it just behind this piece so that when everything is closed up, you are not going to see it. So again, that is two and three quarters wide and five inches high. And for that piece, I decided that I wanted to use the Knight of Navy as the color for the ink. And again, I got my acrylic block and I used the stamp in that set that has Because You're Awesome. And just put that in the center up at the top. And those are the pieces that I am going to use as the stamped images when I put this card together. So I'm just going to put those over to the side. And then there's one more, actually two more pieces of paper. They're the same size and the same color that we need to get kind of put together before we are done with our sentiments. And you're going to see that we've got a square that is right underneath that happy birthday sentiment and another square that is underneath the celebrate sentiment. And because I am sticking with the theme of colors and I wanted to bring out that background color in the piece that is the pure cardstock, I cut out two pieces of cardstock and these are two and a half inch square. They are just a teeny, teeny bit bigger than the two and three eighths inch circles that I punched out. And that's just gonna give me a little bit of a border and also it's gonna kind of square off the design a little bit as well. Okay, so you would need two of those. Now, one more piece of paper, and then we're going to get everything moving as far as just putting things together. You may notice that there's an additional piece of designer series paper that's tucked on the edge of that inner page. I mentioned that when you cut the designer series paper initially, that 12 by 5 and a quarter inch piece, you're going to have some leftover designer series paper um, if you cut out two. 12 by 5 and a quarter. And I took one of those leftover pieces and I cut this to half an inch wide and six inches long. And I cut it to six because I wanted to make sure that I have a little bit more than the height of my card so I can trim it off well. And I wanted to add a little, just a touch of a different pattern so there was a distinct edge when you look at that middle page, just to give it a little bit more character. And I'm going to go ahead and add this piece, and we'll start the assembly. I found that the easiest way to do this is to kind of open up the card, and I'm going to decide what side I want, meaning what pattern I want. And I like this. I like the uh, horizontal lines. It kind of matches a little bit with the horizontal, at least the lines. I know the pattern is completely different. And I'm just going to take a little bit of glue. I don't need a lot because really what I'm just trying to do is get this to stay on the edge. And then if I turn this and I grab the piece that I want to attach 
and I'm going to try to get close to the edge and then I can tip this up. A little hard to see when I'm trying to do this and, and put it on camera as well. But I'm just going to scoot that piece right to the edge. And because it's six inches long and the designer series paper is five and a quarter, it's going to hang off of both ends, which is exactly what I want it to do. And I'm just going to look at it from the back and try to get it kind of flush with the side. And then I'll give it a nice little burnish. And I'll come in with my snips and snip off the excess. And when you do this, always make sure that when you are cutting from cutting the edges to trim them off, do it from the back. Don't do it from the front. I would not cut looking at it this way. I'm going to cut looking at it from the back because this is going to enable me to really see the edge of the paper that I need to cut. And I'm going to have to finagle this one. I'll show you the other side a little bit better. So I was able to cut right at that corner and I've got just an extra little piece. You'll be able to see it better on this side because I can get right up to that edge of that designer series paper that I can see on the top and I just get a really, really clean edge by doing that. So now when we look at that center page, it has a nice defined pattern that just highlights it and it kind of when somebody looks at it they're going to say okay it's not just one piece I'm going to see some other pieces. Now this is the fun part because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add both of the squares and you may have noticed when you look at this straight on the squares are absolutely one in front of the other. Not hard to do. The first one we're going to do is we're going to do the front and we're going to put the square on before we put the sentiment on. I want to get this aligned where I want it to be and then I'm going to add the sentiment. Let's think about this for a minute. I just want the front flap to be glued to my square. I don't want the square to be glued to this middle piece. So I am going to put glue on the front flap and in order to kind of get an idea of where I want that to be, I'm just going to eyeball it. I could put it up high, I could put it down low, I could try to center it. It is absolutely up to you as far as what you want to do. And I am just going to kind of eyeball where I believe that is going to be going and grab my glue. I've kind of put my fingers where that is going to, to go. I don't need a lot of glue at all. And when you're doing something like this, put the glue on the piece that will receive the piece of paper. That way you're gonna know you're getting glue in the right place. And then again, I'm just gonna stand up, move this a little to the right so I can see it a little bit better. And then what I'm trying to do is get about the same amount of designer series paper showing on either side of that square and I'm trying to get it straight-ish and what I like to do is I like to turn the card and look to see does it look like it's straight in this kind of frame does it look like it's straight here if I look over on this edge and that doesn't look too bad that looks like it's pretty darn close and because there are so many patterns going on, if it's not perfect, let it go. It will be fine. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add the second square. And that is going to go on this piece. And we need to get it so that it is really tucked right behind the one that's in the front. And the best way to do that is we are going to open up that front piece and just lay that kind of down. We know that we're going to end up putting it on the center, that center page. So we know about where it's going to go. And we know we want to get some glue kind of right in here. So what I'm going to do is 
this is going to sound like I'm I am backtracking, but for this one, I'm actually going to put the glue on the back of the square. And I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I am going to take that front piece and I'm going to just kind of put it like this. And then I can see that I have just a teeny, teeny bit that is overhanging. So if I get the glue on the back side on a good portion to the left, I will be completely fine. So I'm going to take my square. I'm going to lay it down on that front square. And I'm going to go ahead and put some glue back here. I know I've got plenty of room on that side to put glue. And this is the side that would get glued to this piece if I just fold it over. So I'm just going to line that up. And I'm lining this square so that it's directly on top of the one that is on the front. And then I'm going to fold this piece over. And now that piece is glued to the middle page. And look, that front piece is directly in front of the piece that is in the middle. And if I fold that over, you're going to see that they are absolutely lined up. So that's just an easy way to get those pieces on and make sure that they look like they are absolutely in line. Now, you could use circles rectangles, triangles, you can use any kinds of shapes that um, will be large enough to glue onto these pages and use that same trick to just line things up by putting them on top of each other. Now we can start to put the final touches on the card and before I get too much further I'm going to go ahead and just put that little sentiment piece in the back and it will be put down exactly the same way that I've done everything else with a little bit of the liquid glue. I should buy stock in this company because I use this glue all of the time. And I'm going to try to put my piece so that the border at the top and the bottom and then at the side. And the way to see what the border is at the side is to really kind of get an idea where that fold is. And I'm just going to try and center it. This design is really busy, so if it's not perfectly straight, no one will know. And there are no horizontal lines that are going to show if it's straight or not. And just like we planned, you can't see that sentiment when the card is closed. I'm working from the back to the front and I'm doing that intentionally. So the next piece that I'm going to put on is going to be the Celebrate that has the cupcakes in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and adhere that directly to the square. This kind of card, because there are multiple layers, I don't suggest that you get really crazy about using dimensionals on the inside on this layer. It might just be a little too thick and it may cause the card not to work exactly the way you intend it. So my advice, at least, you know, try a couple that are flat like this one and then if, if you want to branch out, obviously go for it. The way that I attempt to get this straight is I'm really looking at those dots on the left and the right and trying to get those as straight as I can so that they look like they're the same distance from the the top of that little square. And now I can work on the front. And obviously on the front you can have a little bit more height. I use dimensionals on this when I put it on. But I also wanted to have a little bling. And I wanted to put that bling so that it is kind of behind the sentiment that will end up going 
on the front. And just to do something that was a little, a little fun, a little different. So you can see what I did is I used some of the Simply Elegant trim. This comes in silver and in gold. And I love this. I use it quite a bit. I tied a double bow. And I left a lot of the tail because I really wanted to figure out how I wanted to place the bow underneath that sentiment. And that allows me to do that. And then I use this super technical tool of scotch tape. And I'll show you what I did. I'm just going to kind of figure out where that bow would end up if I get it sort of centered with my sentiment. I'm just going to hold that down. And then the piece that I really want to make sure that I can scotch tape down is going to be the tail that I'm holding. I want that to kind of pop out a little bit from the bottom. So again, using this super, super highly specialized scotch tape. And I'm just going to put a couple pieces to hold that where I want it to be. I know that those scotch tape pieces are going to be hidden when I put my sentiment on top because it is going to be pretty close to the edge and I can always put a little um, rhinestone on the top of that as well if I want to. Okay, And then I'm going to use some dimensionals because I want to give the front sentiment a little bit of height. It just it seemed like it needed to get popped up a little bit. And I'm just going to add some dimensionals to this. When you do this, if you have especially a circle, I always want to put a dimensional right in the middle just so that the shape will not sag when I get it onto my card. And I'm going to turn this over and just kind of give it a little push and make sure that it is not going to sag anywhere. And then I'll go ahead and take off the wax paper backing. The one in the middle already had the wax paper off, which is why it was starting to stick to my other piece. And then I am going to, I'm actually going to flip that piece of scotch tape back just a tad so that I can not put the rhinestone there. So I might have had a little bit too much tape, but that's easy enough to remedy. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my sentiment in here. And I'm going to do my best to get that happy birthday centered and straight and that's going to be good enough. Good enough. Then I can also pull a little bit on that twine on the bottom left and just pull that bow in. That looks pretty good. Now for this little guy, this tail here, I don't want that to just pop up. So a really good way to train that tail to do what I want it to is I am simply going to use a glue dot. And I am going to take a glue dot off of this sheet and I'm going to literally take that off and just roll it a teeny bit so that it's almost like a little line. And then I will lay this down and figure out about where that would look good. Pull it over and just pop that glue dot down and then I can lay that piece of twine right over that glue dot. And it will stay nice and in place for me. And then the last thing that I did for this card is I added some bling and I wanted to keep that silver theme going. I think blues and silvers just look so pretty together. And these basic rhinestone jewels are 
an, a must for me. I love them. I think they are stunning and really, really easy to use. And I've got my Take Your Pick tool. I'm just going to get one kind of in here. And then I want to dress up the Designer Series paper on the outside a little bit. And there's some really cute little places, like right in the middle of that teeny little flower. I can pop in a rhinestone. I think that looks really fun. And then right down here, maybe, in the middle of that flower, I'm going to get a little bit of a larger rhinestone. And I like to put some bling so that it's partially on the designer series paper and partially on the cardstock. And I think that just gives a nice little finish. So there's the card. Let me bring back in the original one as well. You'll see that they're pretty similar. Not exactly the same. No two cards ever are. But I think they are just fun. And you're going to be amazed. Look at your designer series paper stash. I bet you have retired designer series paper that would look gorgeous in this kind of design. Obviously, new paper will look gorgeous as well. And if I can be so bold to say, you need the countryside and paper. It is stunning. And it makes some gorgeous cards like this. But look at your collection. You're going to see papers that you can use that have great designs on the inside, on the outside. These are quick and easy and great for any kind of occasion. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I really hope you give this card design a try, and I would love to see what you make. Until next time, inky hugs.